Hello everyone, so I wanted to make a, um, uh, just unscripted, um, video about some lessons that I've learned uh, through my Christian walk. Um, so I've been through, you know, a lot of things throughout my life. I've mentioned some of those things on my Christian testimony, but I, I didn't you know, mention all of them, I guess. Uh, since then, if you've seen my video on the power of love, um, I'm seeing that I've kind of overcome, like, some of the legalistic pace in that video, and I didn't mention this, too, but I guess, you know, there was a part of my life where I thought... I was demonically possessed. Um, I don't want to go into details because it's a little weird and inappropriate, but basically I was just having weird dreams. Um, and I thought they were caused by demons. And still I feel like maybe some of them were caused by demons. I suppose that's possible. I know it's, you know, like, basically, Christians disagree on whether uh, Christians can be um, possessed by demons or not. But all of them basically agree that we can still be oppressed by demons, that demons can still affect our lives and tempt us, um, even if they can't possess us. And, um... To be honest, I'm still not sure because, you know, at first I was, after I got, after I realized, so I'll talk about this later probably, that um, it wasn't really demonic possession, um, then um, my mom, you know, was explaining to me um, that believers, if we have the Holy Spirit, then we can't have a demon in us, because the Holy Spirit takes up that place, basically, and is more, far more powerful than any demon, and, I mean, it makes sense, but, um, I remember seeing another video by, I guess, Isaiah Salvador, I think, I want to say that's not Salvador, it's something else. I forget what his last name is, something like that. Um, and he was saying that um, we can, as Christians, it is possible, and basically explaining that, well, it would be weird if it wasn't possible, because that would mean that Christians could do things like watch pornography or um, do drugs, and that they could do those things and not be demonically possessed, they could not suffer any consequence, and that just seems unfair, basically, that, um, it just seems like you can use, like, using grace as a license to sin, which, of course, the Apostle Paul spoke against strictly many times in the epistles, and... So, I guess I don't know, I, because you could also argue, like, if a Christian were to, you know, sin in such a, a serious way after they've been saved, after they've been set free from sin, um, that, um, they're no longer Christian anymore, that, um, until they, you know, repent and turn from that, that, such a serious sin as, you know, turning back to an addiction, turning back to something God has set them free from, that would actually like, cut off their relationship from God. And really all sins do that, you know, as a Catholic I was taught that there are venial sins and mortal sins, because I was raised Catholic, and we were taught that venial sins just weaken your relationship with God. 
and that only mortal sins. And if you're wondering, Catholic Church teaches a mortal sin is basically murder, and because that's what mortal, you know, means. It's with life, so, and that's it. Any other sin is a venial sin. Um, and so, um, but yeah, that's what they taught. They taught that only mortal sins break your relationship with God. And that mortal sins require the sacrament of reconciliation and that all other sins can be resolved just through the prayers that are prayed at the regular hom homily and that you can still receive communion. Um, and they, st they stay, you know, that you still should go to reconciliation for um, venial sins, but um, you can still receive communion, I guess, at the point uh, without going to reconciliation. Whereas if you commit a moral sin, you have to go to reconciliation. Of course, they encourage, they strongly encourage you to tell it to police too, and like, turn yourself in and all that. Um, but that's not what the Bible teaches. Is my point. The Bible teaches that all sin breaks our relationship with God. Um, there's no such thing as a sin that weakens, that only weakens our relationship with God. Um, and if that were the case, then, I mean, the vast majority of people haven't killed anyone, right? So, I mean, if venial sin only weakens your relationship with God, then it would seem like the vast majority of people are going to heaven. And that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says very clearly that the way to heaven is narrow. There are few that find it. And the way to hell is broad, and there are many who find it. So anyways, I'm getting a little off topic, but... Um, so... I guess, I don't know if I mentioned this in any of my videos, but for a long time, I've been desperately trying to hear the voice of God, and it has been a very hard struggle for me. Um, uh, I don't even know if I told this on this channel yet, but there was, um, there was even a time, it's going to be hard to explain, um, but basically I feel like I don't even know what I was trying to hear from God at first but I just remember praying and I feel felt like I feel like it was this way you know the last night too I was praying God one night and I got really really frustrated that I couldn't hear it clearly like it the answers I felt like I was receiving just kept going back and forth, and and then I, I would just yell at God. I would say things like, "God, I just want the first thing you tell me always to be true. I'll just tell me something, and I'll do it." And I even said something like, "I don't care if you tell me to chop my head off, you know, I'll I'll do it." Like I didn't really mean that, of course, but I, you know, I was frustrated. I felt like I needed to exaggerate and just get my point across in an extreme way, you know, obviously I wouldn't really chop my head off if I felt like God was telling me to do that, um, but, you know, I was just really frustrated, I just said that out of frustration, basically, um, and I was just, you know, trying to prove the point that, you know, I want the first thing God tells me to do, and no matter what he tells me, I'm just I'm just gonna go with it. So it it better be right is my point. And maybe I guess that was probably I got to the test in some way. I don't know. Um, but you know, I was just really frustrated. And then to make matters worse, um, I uh, I was praying still upstairs. I bet. I don't know why. Usually I just pray for an hour downstairs and that's it, but I, 
because I felt the need to pray more in my bed. Maybe I just wasn't tired or something. I don't, I don't really remember, honestly. Um, and, um, and I, I feel like I was hungry. And so I feel like that's why I felt like God was telling me to go downstairs and eat, basically. And so I did. And we had some brownies. And, you know, I felt like God was telling me I could have some. And then, you know, I could even, there was like some frosting with that. I know this sounds weird, but I felt like it was telling me I could, you know, have it with some frosting on it because I was kind of worrying if that would be too much sugar in one day. Um, I felt like, you know, God was telling me I could do that. And so I, I did. I felt like God wanted me to do that even. And so I, I did, and I, I ate something else. I forgot what else I ate. Maybe some fruit. I don't know. Um, and right after I ate it, I felt convicted, and I felt like God was telling me I had too much sugar. And it was really frustrating because I felt like before that, God was telling me he wanted me to eat it. And... Um, you know, then I just went back up to my room, and again, I just started yelling at God, and then I told him, like, God, I, I mean this, like, and I really meant it this time, like, you know, obviously when I said, um, like, I was gonna chop my head off, I would, I would never, like, chop my head off, if, if someone told me, like, um, deny Jesus or I'll chop your head off, that would be different, that would be giving my life as a martyr, I wouldn't be chopping my head off. Um, and, you know, in the book of Revelation, it, I think it's clear that many Christians in the end times will have to go down that route. And, you know, you may have seen, like, a lot of Christian videos, they show pictures of Coptic Christians from Egypt, um, and they're about to get beheaded by ISIS. And they don't actually show them getting beheaded, but they show them, like, kneeling down and like, people dressed in all black standing behind them. And, you know, you can infer what's going to happen. Um, but anyways, so I told God, just out of this extreme frustration that I was having that day, like, God, even if you tell me to chop all my fingers off, like, that was the most thing, extreme thing I could do that, think that I, you know, I might actually do, and I'll, I'll do it like I mean it, and then, you know, I kept praying, I don't know what I was saying, but, you know, I maybe felt like I was telling out to do it, and, you know, I guess I felt like, um, it was because, you know, it wouldn't be feasible, and then, you know, I was saying, like, I was telling God, like, I will actually make my best effort to, like, chop all my fingers off, if that's what I feel like you're telling me to do, because I'm just so frustrated, or something like that, you know, um, like, I was telling him, like, I have, you know, this Swiss Army knife, I, I don't know, and so, because I don't really know if I was, exp I guess, you know, I, of course, I was hoping, you wouldn't say, I was hoping, I was kind of hoping, you know, I was just, I would just say that to, just to prove my point, and then it would be done, and then maybe, um, I don't know, God would tell me something a bit extreme, just to prove, well, maybe God would tell me, okay, I want you to, um, read six chapters of the Bible, 10 chapters, 20 chapters, I don't know, um, before you go to bed. But, of course, I actually had this voice, and it felt like, um, it, like it wasn't me, it wasn't like I was just in control of it, but it came to me, and I felt like it was telling me, go chop off all your fingers. 
I was like, of course, of course, there's a voice telling me this. And now for the record, I wasn't, you know, stupid. I, I knew it wasn't really God telling me that. Um, so I may think, okay, uh, well, the logical thing to do would just be rebuke it and just move on, I guess. Um, but I, you know, at the time I was really frustrating. My emotions were getting the best of me, basically. And I felt like, although, it, so this is where it gets hard to explain because, um, I guess it's hard to, like, I've been trying to explain to people my motive behind doing this and, you know, like, I can understand it myself, but, like, it's, it's hard to explain to others. It wasn't because, you know, I feel like I've explained already. It wasn't because I actually thought it was God telling me to do this. And I guess I don't know what else you could think of. But I guess I'll just try my best to explain why I did it. Um, or what I did first. So after I heard that, I guess I'll just explain what I did. And then I'll explain why I did it later. I feel like that would be best. Um, so... You know, I felt like I needed to do this, which, again, I'll explain later. So, I I actually went downstairs, and, you know, I, I told my parents this the next day, by the way. Um, and I was going to go in the garage, and I was going to try and find some, like, branch clippers. Like, you know what those are, and... I couldn't find any. I looked in the garage, a whole bunch of places. I couldn't find any. Um, so I almost feel like maybe I went up to my room again and just got my knife in. Um, it is, it's funny. It's easy to cut your, it's just like, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure you may have heard like, uh, it's impossible, it's practically impossible to intentionally bite your tongue and make it hurt because your your brain just won't let you. But you can accidentally hurt, bite your tongue and it'll hurt a lot because it's just that it's accidental. So, you know, over the years, I've gotten, I've bled, you know, a few, I, I like cooking. So, you know, I've, I remember there was this one time where I had this coconut and I was trying, it was like really hard. Like the, the white part was like, like rock solid. And I was trying to get it out with a knife and I like scrape like the top part of my, my thumb pretty bad. And it was bleeding a lot. Anyways, um, so, you know, when you accidentally do something, it can, you know, end up pretty bad and hurt pretty bad. But, you know, when I was, like, intentionally trying to cut through skin, it's it's not easy. Just to, which I guess was a good thing uh, at the time. But, you know, like, it, anyways, just, I mean, it was a sharp knife. It was, you know, a pocket knife. Those are pretty sharp. But it, it didn't really do much of anything, surprisingly. Um, and, uh, and so, I think I even, like, tried to bite my finger. I don't know why. I, even though I, I've literally heard online, you cannot bite off your own finger. It's impossible. Your own brain will not let you... Um, and so, I, you know, I did, I, I left a pretty big indent on my pinky because, you know, I guess it's going to, you know, sound extreme, I don't know. But, you know, I, I was seriously thinking of doing this. I felt like, well, I guess I'll explain the basis is, the basis was not like, like I was saying, that, um, that I felt like this was actually God telling me to do this. 
or that I was, I remember telling me this to, uh, like, some mental health doctor, um, that was going to prescribe me, um, prescriptions, and I was kind of bothered by what she was saying a few times, because she was saying, like, are you, she was constantly asking, like, are you having paranoid thoughts? I was never paranoid, that was definitely not, you know, it's not like I was schizophrenic or anything, and sometimes when I tell those things, like, even to my own parents, you know, I'm afraid, or to, you know, a counselor, I'm afraid they're going to think I'm, like, schizophrenic or something, um, but luckily my parents don't think that, I, I really don't think that, because, mainly because, from what I understand, schizophrenia is something you were born with, you know, I only started, you know, receiving these powerful voices once I really believed that, first of all, believed that God could speak to me. And even then, you know, like, I I still remember there was this one day, um, I want to say it was, like, either right before or right after, I, I forget, right before or right after, like, the COVID lockdown was, like, in March of 2020. Um, I feel like it must have been right after, actually, because I remember I was home. Um, but you could still, like, go to parks. And so my parents wanted to take me to the park that day. Um, but, like, this walking trail park, basically. Um, and I was staying in my room for a while because I wanted God to speak to me. And I stayed there. I think I... I feel like I woke up pretty early, actually. I feel like I woke up at, like, 9 or 10 a.m., and I stayed in my room till like, 5 p.m. Because I didn't eat, I didn't drink, I didn't even go down at all, even to take my medicine. Um, I was, I mean, maybe I took my medicine, I don't know, it's hard to say. I was just in there the whole time, just trying to hear something from God, just begging for him to talk to me. I remember, you know, I would even get hard on myself, and say things like, you know, God, I don't even care if you tell me you hate me. Um, just tell me something. Like, I was just desperate just to hear something from God. Um, and I, maybe that was the reason I didn't hear anything from God. Maybe, I guess, like, if you're just begging God to say something to you, um, he's not going to say anything, you know, like you have to, you have to ask him something, maybe, I, um, I don't know, I guess I'm still, I'm still learning, um, because I guess looking back, that is basically what I was doing the whole time, I was just, I just wanted God to tell me something, I just wanted, uh, him to prove, like, what, it's not that I wanted, I knew that he could speak to me, I just, wanted to know that I could hear him, I just wanted to know I, I was, like, in the right, I had my Christianity all figured out, and such that I could hear him, and the fact that I, I wasn't hearing anything made me question that, and that's why I was, you know, asking him, telling him things, like, I don't, I don't, you know, like, I don't care if you tell me that you hate me, um, because I felt like the fact I wasn't hearing from him must mean, um, something's wrong must mean, um, I was, I guess I was questioning his love, and at that time, I felt like if he really loved me, he would, he would speak to me, he would answer that request, I, and still to this day, like, I still don't understand why, it's, you know, it's still a struggle for me to hear from God, and what really, I don't want to say this bothers me. I don't want to sound offensive to people that say this, but um, I guess I'll just say what really makes it worse for me um, is I hear other people on YouTube saying, oh, it's it's not hard to hear from God. They make videos how to hear from God, and and they make, you know, they, like, pray prayers at the end, like, and just ask what you hear. And I remember... Um, um, going through those videos and praying prayers at the end and trying to hear from anything from God, I, I didn't hear anything. And still to this day, you know, 
I, I certainly now do have voices, and the thing is, um, because I've had such a hard time hearing from God, you know, I've prayed, and it's been like this ever since, so I've prayed to God that he would, um, make his voice literally come out my mouth, like a spoken voice, almost like speaking in tongues, if you speak in tongues, you probably know what it, it feels like. If you don't, then it's it's hard to explain. Um, I guess the best thing, um, I almost feel like the best way I could describe what speaking in tongues is like is if, you know, if you've ever put your finger, I know this is going to sound weird at first, but like if you ever put your finger on a hot stove or something hot, you you automatically just pull it back and you can't control it and I guess in a way speaking in tongues is like you start speaking and then automatically just sort of like as a reflex it's almost like I guess another way to describe it is like when you know like if you're a doctor they uh they like have this little mallet thing and they like pound it right below your knee and then your leg automatically like kicks and you're not controlling it. It's just a reflex. That's kind of what it feels like, but that's still not a very accurate description because there's like this supernatural joy that comes from it too. That, um, and supernatural love you feel from it too. Um, and it's a very, it's a feeling that's very hard to describe um, because it's really, um, not like anything else, um, but, yeah, I guess the best way I can describe it is, like, you start praying, and then oftentimes you, you get this feeling that I have no idea how to describe, um, it's unlike anything else, but you get this feeling like you know you're about to speak in tongues, and, um, and then you like um you can sometimes I like hold it back but you know like why would you I you know I guess sometimes somehow I can like know that that is a possibility if that makes sense but I feel like I, I really do that because I, if I, whenever I get that feeling, I know that that means God wants me to pray to him in, um, in tongues. And so I, you can also have that choice, like, to, um, go through with it. And so, you know, like, I just, it's hard to explain. Basically, like, I, I kind of just give in to that that feeling and then it's like from then on it's kind of like just like my mouth it's like my whole mouth is like your leg when it when the doctor pounds it with a mallet if that makes sense it's like I know that sounds funny but it's like my whole mouth is just on full reflex mode um and it's just being controlled by the holy spirit um so I don't know where I was going with this uh oh so, um, yeah, so I had received the gift of speaking tongues before I even was serious about trying, well, before I was serious about trying to hear God's voice, I would say. And so I know what that felt like. I know what it felt like to have a voice, you know come through my mouth uncontrollably and I thought you know if God can make me speak his voice in the same way they can make me speak in tongues like where it's just this uncontrollable reflex that comes out my mouth um and where I'm not in control but it just it just happens um then I felt like that would make it easier. But, you know, the problem is, 
when you're anxious, especially, and I, I've struggled with anxiety. I feel like it's gotten a lot better. Um, but in the past, you know, I just really wanted to hear from God and felt like I couldn't and brought a lot of anxiety. And you know, I, I feel like I've realized that I can like, I can like say something like, you know, completely nonsensical, like, all pancakes are blue. All pancakes are blue. That's not true. Um, but the way I said it right there, it, it felt like a force being... That's almost what it's like when I have, you know, these voices. Sometimes it's just a whisper. Sometimes it's actually um, voiced, if that makes sense. Um, that's actually a phonetic term. I don't, anyways. <clears throat> um... And I realize it's going to be a long video. Oh, well. So, I got time. It's Saturday. Well, it might be Sunday now, actually.